This week I received a question from one of my Power Pivot course members asking if it was possible to allow the user to toggle between different top end items in a pivot chart without using VBA. And the answer is yes, we can with a disconnected table and some simple DAX measures. Let's take a look. I'll be using some sample data. It's stored in an Excel table called data. You can see it's grouped by category and subcategory, and I want to filter the top N subcategories. I'm going to quickly load this data to Power Pivot using the Add to Data Model button. Ideally, you'll do this via Power Query. Let's go back into Excel because I also need a table that contains the top N values that I want in my slicer. Let's also add this to the data model. And if we just take a look at the diagram view, you can see there's no relationship between the two tables. And that's exactly how we want it. There should be no relationship between these two tables. We're done in Power Pivot now. Let's close down the window. Now I need four measures. The first measure simply tells us which value has been selected in the slicer. We'll call it selected top n. And I'm just going to use the min function to tell us which value has been selected in the slicer. Now we use min here to handle the possibility that the user selects more than one item in the slicer. You could equally use max if you prefer. It's associated with the data table and that's just fine. I'll click OK. And the next measure we need calculates the total of the amounts. And we'll call this total amount. And it simply uses the sum function to calculate the amount. And let's give this one some formatting. We'll give it no decimal places and the comma separator. The next measure ranks the subcategories 1 to n based on the top end selected in the slicer. We'll call it rank subcategory. It uses the rank x function and it returns the ranking of all selected subcategories based on the total amount. And the next argument for rank x is value. It's optional. We don't need it here. So I'm skipping that. And lastly, do we want it sorted in ascending or descending order? We can type in DESC for descending or equally you can use zero. Close parentheses. Let's just check the formula. It's all good. And I'll click OK there. And the last measure filters out the subcategories we don't want included. And we use an if formula here. I'll call this include subcategory. And like I said, it uses if to check whether the ranking of the subcategory is less than or equal to the selected top n. If it is, we want it to return 1. If it isn't, we want it to return 0. Close parentheses there and click OK on our last measure. All right, we're ready to insert the pivot table on the insert tab, pivot table from data model. Now you might have a slightly different dialogue to me. You might be able to choose from data model at the next dialog box. I have Microsoft 365 and we have this nice drop down which allows me to go straight from data model here to pivot table. Let's put it on a new worksheet and bring the field list over. So here I want to know the subcategory and I want my total amount and I want the rank and I want to pop in whether we include the subcategory or not. Let's start by sorting them here, smallest to largest. You can see here it's currently showing me the top five. Next thing I need to do is apply a filter to the pivot table to only show me where there's a one in the subcategory. So here I can apply a value filter where it's greater than based on include subcategory, where it's greater than zero. Okay, I don't need my grand total. Let's right click and remove grand total. I also don't need this column anymore. So let's remove it from the pivot table. You can see the filter still persists even though it's not in the pivot table. Now I need to insert a slicer for the top N. So we'll do that down here. Right click, add a slicer. And you get this yellow warning in the field list because it's concerned there's no relationship between the top N and the data table. And that's fine, you can just ignore that warning. Now when I choose a different filter here, you can see my pivot table filters accordingly. So I'm ready to insert my pivot chart on the pivot table tab, pivot chart. Bar charts are great for this kind of data which has long labels. So let's do that. I'll close down the field list and it's pretty ugly. So let's tidy it up. 
The first thing I want to do is control one and format the axis. Let's bring the formatting pane over here. I want the categories in reverse order. Let's get rid of the field buttons, hide all field buttons on chart. Now you'll notice if I make it a bit bigger that we have two series in here. We have the total amount and then the rank. Now I can't remove the rank from the pivot table, but what I can do is hide it in the pivot chart. So with the pivot chart selected on the format tab, I'm just going to select that series and then I'm going to change the fill to no fill. And then on the format data series pane, if it's not open, control one to open it. I'm going to set the series overlap to 100. Let's make the bars a bit wider. We'll give it a 50% gap width. We'll get rid of the legend. So let's deselect legend and let's add a chart title. So I want the chart title to tell me which top N I have selected. So at the moment I have 15. If We can change it to top 10 or top five. And I want the chart title to reflect that. So let's just move the chart and the slicer down here a moment. I'm going to copy this pivot table and just paste it here and I'll right click and bring the field list back. I don't need any of these fields. Let's take them all out. Here I want the selected top N in the value field. Now by copying this one, it's automatically connected to the slicer. If you don't copy it, if you insert a pivot table from new, you have to right click the slicer, go into report connections, and then make sure both pivot tables are selected. All right, now let's just make that a little bit smaller. Now I can write my dynamic label. It's just a simple concatenation formula that concatenates some text. I want it to say top and then a space. And I want to link it to this cell here. Actually, what I'm going to do is just get rid of the get pivot data formula. Let's just link it to that cell without get pivot data and close it with some text that says space subcategories. Close my double quotes. There's my dynamic title. Now I can select the outer edge of the chart title, click in the formula bar equals and click on this cell here. Now I have a dynamic label. When I select an item in the slicer, you can see my chart updates and so does my label. I hope you found this tutorial useful. You can download the file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.